I usually don't like operating in a way where I have to respond to a link. And this is the first in existential comics. One of their comics, which usually has a lot of interesting philosophy, and I just learned about them upon waking up. And the first one I saw was the fallacy superhero thing, but this was the first one, actually. And it's called The Machine. To basically summarize it, there's a machine that recently came out and innovated everything. Gone are the airports, gone is most public transportation, we can instantaneously go from place to place. So, there's an instantaneous means for us to teleport, it's actually a teleport station. And they're everywhere, basically. But what this one man realizes is that, basically, it doesn't really take you from place to place perfectly, it creates a atomic copy of you. You have all the atoms, but the original gets destroyed. And since this is an instantaneous process, he thought, well, what if you would actually, see, what if it was a bit slower and you could actually see your original self getting destroyed? Then you realize that you're a copy and the original is gone. So this thing is straight up killing people. And creating clones that have the identical memories and haven't realized it happened. So he's protesting, he's getting a bunch of people, but as we all know, guys are stupid. Guys don't understand this kind of stuff. Uh, and it's extremely convenient. I mean, no one wants to deal with the inconvenience of airport security, especially with the TSA. TSA or eradicating yourself and creating a identical copy. And this is an interesting question because so far, this is stuff I've spoken about before. What makes you, you, if you were to, let's say, die, but they had a some copy of you and they created it immediately. I always ask my friend this. Is that person the same thing? And he always said, no. No. But then he walks into a bar one time and he actually sees the devil. I think it's the guy that created it, not the actual devil. But he said, he asks him, he asks him, is this all true and what why? And he says, well, you're not the sum of your atoms. I mean, and is this true? On a semi-periodic, semi-annual basis, once every six months, we lose all our cells and we basically get new ones. And it's a gradual process. So you literally aren't, if you're watching this, in the same month I'm watching this, which is, I'm making this, which is January. You're not the person you were in July. If we're looking at an atomic basis, gradually you're a different person. But also, yeah, your atoms are constantly changing. And it's only your memories and your consciousness that becomes you. So anytime that consciousness is interrupted, i.e. dreaming, are you gone? Do you die and is there another person with another life, completely different from you, with the same memories, same body that basically takes it all and keeps moving forward? That concerned him. That drove him to anxiety because now he doesn't want to go to sleep because he knows once that consciousness is interrupted, he's gone. It's another life. And of course, this drives him to hedonism. He's a, he's a one-dimensional character. He's absurdly autistic. And I think most characters need to be that to some extent. They need to be short-sighted 
in order to work their function. And his function is pretty interesting. And of course, he runs out of money. He doesn't want to go to his office job because who wants to spend the last day in a miserable office job? But eventually he does get sick of it. He tries to commit suicide. And like, he, he goes in front of a train, I think. But then he realizes, well, I don't want to be a murderer. If everyone here could just be at peace, then they can spend this life, this ridiculously short life. I mean, most people, how long are they awake? A few hours, like 12, 13, 18. Sometimes I'm awake for like 42 hours or 48 hours, 50 something hours. I'm really weird. And of course, we're not going to adopt military training and force ourselves never to sleep again, never to need it. That's way too inconvenient. I'd rather deal with going out or having my consciousness interrupted, which in his eyes is death. It's like, at that moment, that you returns to nothingness. But... That he, this is his turning point. He realizes that hedonism is robbing his future selves. The new hand that happens when he awakens of stuff. So he'd rather j he returns to the countryside. He moves to the countryside. He starts doing his thing. He starts basically... What is it? Uh, he's just getting his life together. Some people look at him as a loony guy. And some people just look at him as a wise sort of prophet in a way. I don't think prophet's the right word. But, okay, it's right enough. He starts giving money to panhandlers that really deserve it. Not just the guys that even get stoned. The guys that understand that it was because they were lazy and incompetent. And he realizes that it's not just his future selves that he shouldn't be robbing stuff from. It should be everyone else that and their futures that he shouldn't be taking from. So he does this and it becomes the rest of his life. And upon his final days when the guy working in the hospital says I'm right, too old, you're too sickly and feeble, you're not going to live much longer. He accepts it and the Doctor's like, do you understand what I'm saying? He's like, yeah. He's been doing this, essentially, forever. This has been an ongoing process. But at this point, he realizes, well, when I die now, there's not going to be a future me that's going to collect the memories and consciousness and the body and keep going. This really is the end of the line. And that's kind of how it ends. I also forgot there was a point where after the suicide thing, where he tried to commit suicide, but he figured he'd rob everyone, where he actually does go into the teleportation machine, he sees a bright light, and makes a full revelation there. He only made half of it when he was going to suicide. And then when being teleported, was a bright light, then nothingness, and then a new one was made afterwards with the same memory. So, upon thinking of that, I realized that there is some issue with materialism. It's way short sighted, and it doesn't account for a lot of things. Yet, this kind of mentality is also short-sighted in a way, but he was able to apply a stoic sense of logic as a means of continuing on. So, he was able to find meaning, despite the fact that he was looking at things in a conscious, heavy way. And it just lets me know that Philosophically, there is a lot of wiggle room for finding the meaning for 
becoming noble, which is essentially what he did. I mean, I'm not going to assume that every time my consciousness gets interrupted that I'm dead, but if I were to look at that, but then look at it in a stoic way, then it's not just going to be me getting stuck in full retard hookers and blow land. Which wouldn't be the case anyway. Anyway. What do you guys think about the comic? I'm going to put a link in the description. Me personally, I don't really... It's existential philosophy. Which isn't my cup of tea. Maybe it was back in 2010 when I was more philosophically driven. Yet I'm not as philosophically driven here in 2014. That might change since it's only January and... I may have to get back into philosophy and approach things at a philosophical level. I'm still recreating myself. Anyway, this is Mr. Ronk7. Hope you guys are enjoying my video right now. And suck my dick. <laughs>